welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, Tom Clasby from the Quincy Council on Aging will be joining us for an update shortly. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, brilliant sunshine, but it is brisk and breezy. 39 degrees right now. It's about as warm as it's going to get today, just a couple of degrees warmer, but that wind has definitely got a bit of a bite to it today. Temperatures will dip down into the mid 20s this evening. We're looking at a widespread frost once again tonight. Tomorrow, well, cloudier, but still pretty uh, cool with highs again only in the low to mid 40s. And then our stormy day is the day we don't want it to be on Wednesday, the big travel day. It'll be windy, warm, and wet with temperatures uh, soaring into the low to mid 50s on Wednesday, but it will be difficult travel with that rain and wind and a small craft advisory, maybe even a gale warning for some areas on later Wednesday afternoon. But Thanksgiving Day itself looks very nice with a mix of sun and clouds and pretty mild for this time of year with highs Thursday in the low 50s. Again, sunshine, breezy 39 degrees in Quincy right now. Checking out news for you today, the new Yaki Housing Resource Center here in Quincy is now open. The new center that replaces Father Bill's homeless shelter on Broad Street officially opened earlier this month right across the street from the old shelter. The new facility features day services, including meals, medical services, job placement assistance, and some recreational activities, too. The new center also includes 30 permanent housing units for people who experience chronic homelessness, as well as an emergency shelter. The $26 million facility received $10 million in local, state, and federal assistance. The city purchased the property for the new center and then leased it to Father Bills and Mainspring for 99 years for a dollar a year. Now, the new center is hosting Thanksgiving dinner this coming Thursday from noon to 2. The city will now demolish the former Father Bills to make way for the new public safety complex that is currently under construction. Well, there may be a few changes to polling locations in Quincy during next year's presidential election. City Clerk Nicole Crispo says that several issues came up during the recent city election that will be addressed going forward. Here, some feedback um, from some constituents on um, some of the new polling places, Broad Meadows, Snug Harbor, um, and a couple of the others with um, lighting concerns. Um, you know, it does get so dark so quick at four o'clock, you know, um, that I, I should have taken that into um, consideration. Um, but when I went out there during the day to look at the sites, I, I didn't notice. And, and there was a few other issues. Um, uh, Broad Meadows, perhaps it would be easier to go to the cafeteria rather than to go to uh, the gym for for helping people to get um, with with disabilities and things um, to be mindful of that. And it might be easier for them to just go to the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to um, look at all that with the mayor. The mayor had some concerns as well that he brought up to me um, and, you know, get some more signage and i know it's a lot when you know you've been going one place for 10 years at least and then we we have to switch it 10 polling locations were changed this year due to redistricting as a result of the 2020 federal census. Crispo says overall the election went smoothly. She says the addition of the electronic poll pads were welcomed both by voters and poll workers. Well, the state legislature is now in informal session after concluding their formal session last Wednesday. Lawmakers adjourned without reaching a compromise on the governor's proposed $2.8 billion supplemental budget, which includes $250 million for the state's emergency shelter system. Quincy State Representative Tacky Chan says the shelter money is the key sticking point in the budget talks. The shelter money is the biggest hurdle it sounds like because well the house is looking for greater accountability we want reports we want to only release money when conditions are met we want money to use specific things like human services and permanent shelter solutions um you know the, the, the senate side give them greater uh, leverage uh, give greater 
options, give them a bit more flexibility for the governor's office to make some decisions how to spend the money, which is, I find, remarkable given the fact that both branches are Reynolds furious, furious with the governor regarding how the migrant situation is being handled. I mm-hmm. cannot find one member that's happy. And Governor Healy says the additional funding for the shelter system is critical given the recent influx of migrants into Massachusetts. Healy also says the shelter system was already strained by Massachusetts residents who've lost their homes due to the expiration of pandemic era rules that prevented evictions and foreclosures. The legislature has until January 3rd to approve the supplemental budget before the process has to start from scratch. Quincy has a new chapter of P-Flag, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. The city's LGBTQ commission recently announced the formation of that new group with meetings held the third Wednesday of the month at the United First Parish Church in Quincy Center. The Reverend Rebecca Froome says the organization is open to anyone who has questions surrounding issues affecting the LGBTQ community because families are not always accepting. Mm. Churches are not always accepting. Schools are not always accepting. So PFLAG creates resources and support for families to then support their LGBTQ children and friends and siblings and beloveds. Um, Because there's so many people who are like, wow, I love my child. And there's just a lot I don't know. Right. Yeah. And PFLAG is, creates resources for, for loved ones to do their ongoing learning and get their own support. You know, because when your child is under threat, that is so painful yeah. for, for parents and teachers and coaches. So for them to have a supportive space to learn to be allies is crucial. And I'm so happy that, that Quincy is taking the step. Tonight, the church is hosting a Quincy Transgender Day of Remembrance Vigil at 7 o'clock to remember transgender and non-binary victims of violence. Well, soon you'll be able to lace up your ice skates on a temporary rink in Quincy Center. Mayor Thomas Koch says the city is working with an outside vendor to install the temporary rink at the site of the former Ross parking garage. I part of the square over the next two years is going to be under some pretty heavy development as we've talked about the Beth Israel medical facility, mm-hmm. the apartments and Trader Joe's. And, and did I say Trader Joe's yet? Yeah, Trader Joe's and <laughs> a bank and, and some other retail operations. So that will be all underway next year. We felt while we have that space available, let's do something with it. And, uh, you know, through our district improvement financing, the DIP program, we're able to pay for it out of the DIP funding, which is money that's generated through taxes from that district itself. So uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing. I, I, we've got a lot of comments on it, and I know people are looking forward to it. Mayor says skating will be free. However, there will be a fee for skate rentals. He says depending on the demand, appointments may be needed in order to ensure that everyone can have some ice time. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we sit down with Quincy Council on Aging Director Tom Glasby for an update. That's next. Welcome back. It's always a busy place at the Kennedy Center here in Quincy. So from time to time, we love to have uh, Tom Clasby, Director of Quincy Elder Services, stop on by and give us an update. That's what he's doing today. Hey, Tom, good to see you. Joseph, always a pleasure. Likewise. Good to see you on this cold day. I know, right? What happens? (laughs) Winter is upon us, I guess. (laughs) Big time, yeah. Uh, How's things going? Things are good. I'm looking forward now uh, the election behind us. uh, Four more years, hopefully. A lot of people don't realize that department heads are tied to administration and there's always a possibility of you going when a when a when a new uh, administration comes in so uh, i feel very fortunate to hopefully continue Um, (laughs) actually the kennedy center is a very busy polling place right it is it is yeah it's it's very busy i think squanum is still number one but it's up there yeah yeah it's, it's up there yeah very good. Yep. So now that's over and done with, moving forward. We're absolutely, yeah. What is on the agenda? Okay, so there's lots of stuff. First yep. of all, and you guys were down, Mark was down to film 
a presentation and he would have noticed a tremendous amount of noise. Yes. <laughs> it's always a little noisy, but it's nice noise. It's people laughing and joking and... and uh, piano playing uh, and Piano stuff. playing yep. and singing, singing and all those wonderful things. This is a little bit um, more difficult. I know you <laughs> followed when there was an appropriation made by the council um, to do some repairs on the building, and those repairs are happening right oh, now. Oh, okay. And, and uh, what's happening really is um, underneath... Um, the building was built in 1957, so um, you know there's some wear and tear. Mm -hmm. like those of us that were built in that, in that area <laughs> in that understand era. this, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. um, so you know, it's stuff that needed to be addressed, and um, we were fortunate the council uh, was cooperative, uh, helpful, and not cooperative, helpful, and um, we've secured the money, and now the work's begun. Unfortunately, there's a lot of concrete down there. There's a lot of steel, and that has to be kind of um, chipped away or jackhammered away, oh. so it's noisy. It's yeah. noisy right now, and this is like phase one. So they're moving from, uh, if those that are familiar with the building, from run where the health department is. Right now, they're close to where our outdoor office is, where people sign up for things. We're halfway through. Um, and then it will continue f uh, moving towards Squanum and Marina Bay, until um, we get underneath the gym. Um, once that I is over with the chipping and everything else, it shouldn't be as noisy. We'll still be able to hear people working underneath. But, uh, hmm. but you, you know, one of the things, and I, I know I've said it here, and, and, and you've certainly heard it over the years, is, you, you know, with buildings, uh, municipalities in general tend to neglect their buildings. They build beautiful buildings. And then... You know, there's no real foresight into how we're going to maintain that mm. building. And and one of the things that the mayor's been terrific about is, is continuing to, um, you know, shore up the buildings and making sure that they're safe. And so this is this is really, uh, you know, it's a good thing. It's a difficult thing to get through. Yeah. So, so is, is there a basement in that building, Tom? There isn't a basement. It's like a crawl, crawl? space, oh, right. you know. Okay. It was, it, you know, it's it's... You know, it's it's built very close to the marsh. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's technically on marshland, but it's very very close to it, and um, so it's on it's on you know the building's on pillars. I ah, mean. I see. You know, I never get involved with the technical stuff. <laughs> the, the engineers explain it; it goes right over my head. You know? Basically, they're fixing so, what foundation it has, so yeah, it lasts yeah, another just, seventy years. It, it, exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, they w it's a great building. I often say, if we were to design a, a senior center, it wouldn't be a lot. Different. No kidding. Yeah, hmm. in terms of the layout, the size of the classrooms and stuff, yeah. the fact that it's on one level, I mean, we've toyed with the idea of possibly going up, and, and that that was kind of the catalyst for the, for this whole thing. And that might ah, still happen okay. down the road. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's be, be be a lot of money, but you need an elevator, um, obviously, for sure. Right. You know, right. Some kind yeah. of accessibility. Yeah. That'd be a big issue. Yeah. Or move offices up and then. Free up that keep you know, the hole downstairs yeah, in the center. Yeah, yeah. yeah, interesting. Well, it was built as an so, elementary school, right? It was. Yeah. You know, over the years, we have a nice little uh, plaque with the history of the building, and you know, it's it's there's been an awful lot of history there between the kids that uh, had graduated from mm. from there to uh, to the Elks was there at one time. Oh, right. Who were built in there? Yeah, their place, and then Beechwood on the Bay was there for many many years. years. And yeah. we, we're fortunate that. Beachwood, of course, was involved with the Senior Olympics. That continues. Right. The volleyball team that we have that meets every Wednesday and is thriving, it was a, it was kept. Um, they they originally started with Beachwood. Hmm. So that's nice. I, I wanted that Still sense of tradition. connection to the past. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. What? How long has the Candidate Center been now, Tom? 2009. No. Yeah. No, it can't Isn't that be. amazing? <laughs> is that right? It is. It's amazing. 14 no, years? Wow. It's, it's absolutely amazing that it's... It's been the time, you know, Joe, and I've often said, and I'm sure I've said it on this, like, I knew it would be a good thing for the community. Mm. And I'd seen other places with senior centers, and I, so I knew basically what they were, but I had no idea, like, the real effect that it has on some folks. Like, yes. for some people, it's their lifeline. They'll tell me, I was suffering with depression before this, or particularly if they've lost someone close to them, a partner, a yeah. spouse, or, you know, they, they, even a close friend, you know, um, that... They, they, They'll come in and they meet new friends, and uh, very often you see people chatting, and you kind of assume they've known each other for 
Well, now maybe they have for 14 well, years. Well, right. But, yeah. but, but, you know, people come in and they make new friends, and that's I, nice. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Yeah. But, you know, I was thinking about this, too. It, it can also be a place um, for caregivers to kind of congregate, folks who are taking care of older folks at home. Because um, right. that's that's a very stressful right, situation. Right. You know? So today they have the dementia cafe um, that'll be going on today, and it, it, it is it just it it offers a little bit a little bit relief. Early on, when I was long before the Kennedy Center or anything else, when I was coming, I went to a workshop or or, or an event that had a series of workshops, and one was on elder abuse, which I took. And one of the things that they stressed is that oftentimes it's a loved one that's a perpetrator. But it can be the neglect or just that they're stressed out to the max. Right. They don't mean, they don't see it as being abusive, you know, but like tying someone to the bed mm -hmm. because they're getting up and they think this is the best way to deal with it and don't really have any relief. I mean, I think we've come an awful long way with education on those kind of things. Right. And yeah. there are agencies that help, but this is a perfect example. We want to get them in and, and have the, the, the care partners um, uh, work with them and, 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 and have a little outlet. They need that. And if it's just once a week, sometimes that makes all the difference right. in the world. And they're not trained, skilled caregivers. You know, they're Correct. just trying to do the best they Correct. can Correct. for their family. And by no means. I mean, most people, it, you know, that's an extreme. What I mentioned yeah. was an extreme. But yeah. it does happen. Yeah. You know, so you never wanted to get to that point. Right. You, know? you want to give them an outlet, a yeah. place to reach yeah. out and get yeah. information. And support. And you know, education. Just, and support. Just to yeah. see other people that are, you know, Dealing with the same situation yep. that you are dealing with is a is a great relief. You're I not think, alone, to people. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so phase one of the renovation. How many phases in the renovation are there? So, <laughs> so that's a uh, to be announced. Okay. No, no. no. <laughs> um, it, you know, th th this will go on. I think for the next few weeks. Okay. The next next few weeks. Um, the the nice thing about it, like it, it's I shouldn't say nice thing about it. The thing that makes it easier to deal with is every part of the building isn't affected all at once right yep. so right now they're close to my office so uh, you know it's very nice to be here joe really i may, I may stick around all day <laughs> hey you're more than welcome to <laughs> no um, your staff won't like you though <laughs> correct, correct so they you know they're, they're getting they're getting there yeah. and uh, a few more weeks i think and that that that'll be finished and then and, and it's probably really um it, it'll probably be in, until the spring that the whole thing is completed, um, but it shouldn't be as uh, as difficult to deal with. Okay, you know? all right. Did, so, will it be able to stay open? Do you think through the yeah, whole time? We, yeah, we 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 you know, and that was the other thing that you know the mayor was concerned about, and we were concerned about. Like, we dealt with COVID, where we had to shut down, yeah. and then you had to regroup. And I mean, we're thriving. Our membership is up. We have people joining all the time. It's great. It's really good. Um, so we didn't want to close down, sure. you know. Um, and, and the flip side of that is people can, understandably, I'm not complaining, but the people can get annoyed, you know, with the with the noise. But it was it really was either well, you know, do we shut down or do we look for alternative places, which is very limited. Mm. Now you're running around the whole city, right. and you know that can be confusing for people, you yeah. know. So best thing to do we thought was just to. Um, just to try to deal with it as best we can okay. and, you know, cross our fingers and hope it goes <laughs> Will there be anything on the inside of the building, do you yeah. know, in terms of updates? It, well, we're always, we're always doing stuff. Yeah, yeah there's a, yeah, actually, uh, I hope to put in a new sound system for our, uh, our musical group that meets every Thursday. Great. And possibly one in one of the other classrooms. Over the years, we've done that um, with grant money. Um, so a couple of a couple of the um, the media room, for instance, that has the computers and the movie has a beautiful you know uh, sound system for the movies. Um, when we have speakers in the classroom, generally you don't necessarily need a speaker, but sometimes if you have someone who's quiet or you know there are folks with uh, hearing issues. Mm -hmm. So we'll have one in there too. Okay. So those will be the next things, and then we're going to look at it. There's a few landscape issues that have to go on too. That'll be happening in yep. the spring. We have beautiful roses out there for so long, and we, 2009, we put them in, and they were blooming even in the winter. Wow. But um, this this year they seem to take. And I, I talked to a few people that had 
roses, you know, in the area too, and they seem to take. I don't know, there's a blight. Oh, no kidding. Hmm. You know, you'll have to get the they, seaside gardeners they had out there issues, to, yeah. <laughs> to take a look at them for <laughs> Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> but you know, we try to keep the place looking pretty. It's a pretty building, sure. and it's you know, so that those things will be addressed too. Um, you brought a whole list of things you want to talk about. So yeah. yeah. So so. You know, get to it. Talking about work and construction and all that, the mm -hmm. Four River Clubhouse has been under construction for quite some time. Yeah, they've now opened uh, it up partially. Yep. Um, and uh, partially, I don't know what partially <laughs> means, but partially. And um, we're able to bring back some programs there. Right now, we have exercise on Mondays, um, 10:30 at 11:30. Um, hopefully soon. We have not begun this yet, but. Um, the South Shore Center for the Visually Impaired, as you know, has been a program that far predates me. Um, years ago, they called it the Blind Center. Yep. Um, so we're hoping to start that up again. Uh, the, the, that'll, be, uh, that'll be Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, we're, we're still working on the times because recreation also has some programs in there. I so okay. we're trying to coordinate. Um, with them, but I'm, I'm lo really looking forward to having the uh, the visual impaired center. It's been a long time since they've been able to meet. It's and great. It's a great group, um, and the commission for the blind is going to be coming in soon to kind of evaluate and give us a little direction on how, how we'd like to move forward with that. I think in the future. Um, it's always been, and Peg O'Connor has just done fantastic work over the years with the with the folks there, you know. Um, and we've had machinery, but now the machinery is out, outdated. So that machinery would be like for a person who's le legally blind, but they, you know, they can't read the newspaper or something like that. So they have these particular machines that yes, uh, assist in that. So hopefully we'll be able to get some some more technology in there to assist. Excellent. So I'd love to see it be the social thing that it's always been, right. and then even more of the technical kind of stuff. That's, yeah, I know we've talked about it in the past is yeah. uh, a satellite yeah. senior center yeah. at the four of a clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, and we've done, and, you know, so so there'll be other programs too that yeah. that 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 will um, that'll be starting up, and it's just nice to be back there. You know, yes. Keep it up. We don't want to lose the integrity of the C of the Kennedy Center. Sure. I mean, that'll always be the main base, yep. um, because as you know, for a long time we had we had operations all over the place. <laughs> you were that, kind that, of nomads around the yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, and that doesn't work well. <laughs> no. um, but I think it does make sense um, to to have uh, something on that end of the city where, uh, particularly where there's a there's a big housing building right there, certainly in the point and. Those folks and even in nice weather can walk down. Yeah, I kind of liken it to the library system. You know, you've got the main branch, which is of course right. the most active. But yeah. I mean, North Quincy is yeah. certainly very active, Absolutely. and Adam Shore and Wallaston Absolutely. too. Yeah. yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah. I'm going to steal that. You go right ahead. <laughs> a, I, I didn't copyright it. It's all yours. <laughs> the other thing too, if I can mention yeah, please. too, um, we have on December 13th. Another holiday party. This one <laughs> sponsored by Baker Braverman and Babadoro mm -hmm. Law Firm, a local law firm. They always do a nice job. Um, they've, they've done it numerous times in the past, and that's going to be on December 13th. There is still some room available for that. So if the folks want to call the main numbers, which is 617-376-1506, they can. Uh, they can still get their foot in the door on okay. that one. Promises to be a, a nice free lunch. <laughs> so, someone will tell you there was no such thing as a free lunch. There is. Is it the Kennedy, the Kennedy Center? Center? Lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of them. Speaking of, is the, the mayor doing his Thanksgiving uh, dinner? He is. Yep. He is. We're, we're at capacity for that. Okay. But that'll be, that'll be, that's Wednesday before Thanksgiving, yep. so this week. Um, and uh, it'll be up at the Elks as it has been. You know, we had difficulty a couple of years back where there was a major uh, gas issue and, and they had to shut down. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, oh. and, and, and you know, but the people are great, you know, and the Elks were terrific to us and, and the, the, the folks really just dealt with it. Um, it all worked out in the end. Um, but, and we certainly don't, it was one of those freak things that happens once every hundred years. Sure. It had nothing to do with the Elks, it was the area. Okay. Was, oh, is that was right? A, yeah, okay. it was a huge uh, issue that had to shut down their ovens. And, huh. uh, Cold yeah. turkey that year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But everyone dealt with it nicely. You know, it's one of the things that's so great about 
the Kennedy Center and I like working with seniors for the most part, it's good stuff. It's happy stuff. They're well, appreciative. You know, they're able to put things in perspective when yeah. you get to that point in yeah. life. And, you know, things like, oh, gosh, we can't heat up our turkey right. dinner right. is really yeah. small in yeah. comparison exactly. to what they've exactly. been through. Exactly. A lot of them are veterans and yeah. seen, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot. of yeah. no things doubt. in their lives. No doubt. The depression, everything, you know, you can go on and on. Right. No, no doubt. Yeah, so yeah. they can yeah. be an inspiration. They yep. teach us a few things for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, you closed, obviously, Thanksgiving and the day after, too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so. same thing around Christmas time? So. I don't know what the Christmas, I haven't even looked at right. it yet, okay. too, but I'm, it generally is. Whatever the city, you know, we operate by human resources, city whatever they put out. So the silly city gotcha. calendar, yeah. So City Hall would be closed. And All right. It would be closed, too. And I'll yeah. send you back to the... Uh, yeah to the noisy uh, oh, boy. <laughs> office. All I'm right. sorry, Tom. That's all right. I'm going to stop at CVS, get some earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Good to talk to you. It's always a pleasure, Joe. Uh, very Thanks happy, healthy uh, Thanksgiving Thank to you, you and your too. family. Thank you, you very too. much. Appreciate it. Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. It's going to be chilly, but uh, lots of sunshine, kind of brisk with highs only in the low 40s this afternoon, feeling colder than that with that wind. We're down below freezing tonight for sure for everybody into the mid-20s. Tomorrow, kind of a carbon copy, but with clouds instead of sun highs in the mid 40s stormy on wednesday it'll be rainy it'll be windy it'll be rather mild in the mid 50s and then thanksgiving day itself looks great for all the high school football games sun and clouds highs in the mid 40s thanks again to tom glasby for joining us today from the quincy elder services thanks to our crew thank you for watching we are also off on friday for the thanksgiving holiday join us next monday folks from the wollaston garden club will be joining us meantime check out our website anytime qatv.org all of our latest programs are there there's news and information video on demand live streaming and much more for all of us here at qatv i'm joe catalano have a very happy healthy and safe thanksgiving